I have this HMV radiogram to do a bit of a service on and as you can see the dial string's broken. The record player's not working very well either, this needs a service. Has it lost the channel and someone's just joined the two together? I'll have a look. I can't see where any wire's been. Somebody must have cut that off as well. Um, it's exactly what I feared would happen. This black paint will not stick to the gold and you can just peel it off like plastic. Let's have a bit of fun with this turntable. I've bought it in and I've just got it sitting on a cushion at the moment. I'm, I may not need to mount it in the turntable holder. This is a Garrard. Uh, it's a 3000 model. They're pretty much the same, the 1000, 2000. Well, actually, most of them are much the same, certainly at this level. At the start of the video, you could actually see this working and it did try and cycle. So it's probably not too bad. It'll just need a service, I think. There's a sticker here with the stylus information on it. I'll try and reproduce that because it is handy. I was able to use that to find the correct stylus. The whole turntable's pretty grubby, but I think it'll clean up. There's a bit of trim up here that's sort of caught my eye since I got this to repair. And I'll see if I can get it off without breaking it. If it breaks, I'll go home. So that's gone rather strange. I'll might be able to um, redo it. I think it's plastic. Might be no, I think it's plastic. All right, I'll try and do something with that. Now this has been put outside for a while. There's a slater or wood louse, whatever you call them. So there's lots of those on it. So it's been stored out in a shed or garage or something. There's another one there. Now, of course, the first thing we do, take this platter off. I'll get the record stack holder out of the way. There's a little clip in here. Now, what I meant to say was there's two clips here. There's this inner one and this outer one. You've got to get the outer one out as well before you can get the inner one out. I think. Oh, this circlip's got to come off. It's slightly unusual in shape. But I found if you do that and just hold that one up, this should sort of spring away. There it goes. He says. So I assume that when they're fitted properly, they should lock in there. Now the platter should just lift off now. Here's the idler rubber wheel, and that looks very, very good. That'll clean up very nicely, I think. Now I know the cycling cam works because I saw it move before, although I'm a bit worried that whole pivot's turning. Mm, that could be a problem. Let's try and remove the circlip. <laughs> my fear has been realized I think that's seized on there this is turning in the base I'll apply some heat to the bearing area uh, what happens is the grease in there dries out the oil dries out and it just leaves the carrier for the oil in there that goes hard and you can't get these off so by heating it I should be able to loosen the grease and expand the aluminium bearing Screwdrivers under there might get it off. Pivot bearing is very loose in its mounting. I've got some WD-40 here. I've made a little dam out of blue tack or whatever you call it in your area. This, this one's called blue tack. So I'm going to fill this with WD-40 and I will let it sit for an hour or so. We're going to have a coffee, come back and hopefully that will loosen the wax that's left in there from the grease. Uh, it's actually been about three hours since I put that um, WD-40 in there, and we had to go out, so yeah, it's not going to give. I'll take that off and reheat it again. I've increased the heat to about 450 degrees on the heat gun, and I've taken that little um, cap that was on there, taken that off as well. So yeah, it smells like things are happening now. I'm pretty sure this will come off now. There it goes. Easy. So I'll just put this aside to cool. I'm pretty sure this post is going to be loose. Yeah. So yeah, I can turn it. So that's just sort of riveted over on the other side. I'll try and reset it if I can. Now with that cam removed, the thrust bearing for the platter can come off. And there's the bearings as well. The spindle should come out. I put some WD-40 on it. No, might have to get that from the other side. Now this little cam follower is seized. Uh, right. So WD-40 that as well. Then I'll loosen it a bit later on. 
Now the idle wheel mechanism is working all right. Needs to be cleaned and oiled, of course. I'll get the idle wheel off. I'll turn it over. We'll see what's on the other side. All these pivot points will need to be lubricated in here and here. A bit of grease up here. A little bit of grease here. I don't think we need much there. The speed change. That's working. Okay, it's a bit stiff. Yeah, it's stiff. I'll need to do the motor as well. That would have dried out. Now, I think the pivot for the cycling cam is in here. Yeah, you can just see it. There it is there. So if I can get to that, just reset it, and that'll fix that. Now, the, the pivot's here, so I'll get this uh, lever off here. Oy. And that should come off there. I'll just lay that down for a second. I'll probably take that off eventually. This lever here is the speed selector. I'll just try and move that out of the way a bit. Yeah, that's still under there. Uh, okay. Looks like I'll have to take this plate off. So I'll take these little C-clips off. Now to remove this plate is a bit of fun. This is just a bit of a... It's not It's not that hard to get off. He says... Gosh. Maybe it is hard. There it is. But now I need to get that off and I assume it's just this screw stopping it coming out. I've got my hand underneath, I'm just turning the shaft there where the cycling cam uh, rotates or pivots and it's not that bad actually but anyway I'll reset the um, riveting there and that, that'll stop it wobbling at least. I want to put this in a tray of solvent or something and just clean the whole thing up. It's um, very very dirty on top and I want to get all this grease out of here. To do that I'm going to take the motor out though, I don't want this soaked in solvent. Just a clip there and some wires there. Okay, so once again it has these little circlips on. Now with any sort of luck the motor should stay there. There's the motor out and um, it's still working so it's not too bad. But I'll pull it all apart and I shall re-oil it. There's some little felt oilers in there as well and I'll clean the bearings up. Something I forgot about, there's a little rubber cushion here, an anti-rumble cushion for the turntable. I'll get that off as well. The spindle's been soaking for quite a while, so I'll see if I can get it out. I might have to tap it out from the bottom. No, yeah, it's not coming. I've got a small drift here, and I'll put it in next to that spindle and pass the mechanism and onto the shoulder of the spindle itself, and that should tap out. There it goes. Well, here's the spindle, and there's the dried out grease, uh, and it just makes it into a shellac or a varnish and I was getting this drift onto that little area there. If that hadn't worked, I would have put some heat on it and it would have come out. That's as bad as far as I need to go to dismantle this. I'm going to put it in the trough and get wash all this stuff out here and then I'll go and get some uh, solvents and a little tray and I'll clean all the grease off. I'll come back when it's all clean. I've got the deck upside down and you can see in there that's the pin that's loose. I'm going to try and reset it. So I'll use a punch. This punch has got a ball shape on the end. So I should try and spread the rivet around so that it swells in the hole. Okay, that should do it. I don't want to flatten it because it'll make it too thin. This can just all fall out. That should hold it though. There it is there. Oh yeah, that's got it. Yep, that's tight. Just to give you an update on this dial plate, I have stripped it back, back to its bare, reprimed it, repainted it, I put the black down first, and then I've put the gold over the top. I contacted the manufacturer of this super gold and said, can I put a top clear coat on it? And they said, no, you can't. And the reason is it's, um, the particles are very, very loose. They're not bound together tightly enough. If you put a clear coat over the top of it, it will um, flatten it and it'll come out a beige color. He said it's really designed for hobbies and not domestic items around the house so I'll give that away. I went to my local automotive supplier and they had this stuff here. I was assumed this was pretty cheap. It is cheap but I assumed it was a cheap finish but someone on the internet wrote up a little bit of a report on it said it was good. So I bought a can of this. It's only six dollars I think and I've put it around here and it looks fantastic. So now what I'm trying to do is reinstate the text. 
Uh, initially I was using a paint pen and it came out all right, but it's not perfect. So what I did was make up a little stamp. I've used these little rubber protectors that you buy on the sheets. They're rubber, they're not the felt. Uh, so I've glued a bit of that on there. I'll spray a bit of the gold on here. And I'll just dip the little stencil in the, in the paint. Here's the text for off. I'll put it on there, just touch it on there. And that looks pretty good. The casting isn't all that accurate, so it doesn't come out very well. But anyway, that works really well. Now I'll just touch this one up again. I've rubbed that off with a bit of cloth. Yeah, looks good. Looks fantastic. Not sure if I said it, but I started doing this with a paint pen. Came out all right. These bigger letters, though, very hard to do. So I've wiped the paint off there, and I'm going to do it again with a little stamp. Probably have to do these um, little raised bits with the paint pen again because the raised bits aren't there sometimes, so you've got to make it up. As I said, I've used these before, uh, but I haven't used these little stick-on foam things, and they work really well. Uh, I stole this pretty much off the Radio Mechanic. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description. He's fantastic. He's a great bloke and yeah, good friend of mine. So I'm going to put his link in the description. Go and have a look at his videos. I've got this back on my bench again. I cleaned this off with uh, soap and water, actually. And I've just been sitting here and just cleaning off um, bits of grease here with some wax and grease remover and a somewhat dirty cloth. It's just a matter of wiping it off. So it's coming up well. There's still some pivot points need to be done. And that's there's one here that doesn't really do much. That's the speed selector. It probably doesn't need to be done. I'll just make sure I can see grease in there. So I'll take it out, clean it up, put a bit more in. This linkage assembly here is the speed selector. So if I put my hand under here and operate the speed selector, it moves this mechanism here. It's just slow. If you watch, it'll just take its time to get in there. It's packed up with grease. This is a roller and it does move. It's loosening up as I run it. I'll pull that apart and re-lubricate it. I'll take this clip off here. This is the pivot point for the speed selector. It does come off. There it is. So that should come off there, and then this should come out of there. This has actually got fresh oil on it, so I don't know if someone's been in here. It just hasn't gone hard yet. Now I'll clean all that off. That's just wiping off with the rags. I don't even need to put any uh, oil and grease remover on that one. And of course give the pivot point a bit of a wipe. Now I can pull this all apart. There's little clips there. You can take it all apart, but I'm not going to bother. That little... Um, there it is. The little speed changing detent -y thing, uh, that just comes out. I'm going to clean the rest of this in situ. Um, this roller I will spray with a bit of WD-40. That should melt the greasy wax that's left in there. And then I'll just put some drops of oil on it. I'll try and clean the wax off that roller with uh, the cloth here with some oil and grease remover on it. Looking pretty good. Now I thought that had a pin through it, but it's only just sitting there, so I only need to oil that. The WD-40 wasn't needed. The other thing is it needs to slide up down that shaft, and as you can see, it doesn't work very well. So I'll use some wax and grease remover on here. I could probably spray that with a bit of WD as well. The WD-40 is about, I think it's about 60% white spirit, so it's basically a, a solvent with the rest of it in there. So I will give that a spray. Now I'll wipe it all off. There you go, much better. I'll put a, a bit of grease on it. I could just oil it, but the grease, well, it's got the oil captured in it, so it can keep lubricating long after a drop of oil will. I think I should use a better applicator than that. That one's just getting it everywhere. Put down the bottom here. Once again, take the excess off, and I'll put a drop of oil here, and another drop down the bottom. Very smooth. Right, time to put it together. I'll put a little bit of grease on this pivot here. It pivots on these little um, raised bits of metal here. So that goes here. So I'll put some grease on this plate here. Turn him over, and that goes in there. And this lever should fit in there. And down on this pivot. 
I went the wrong side of that there. It needs to go underneath. There it is. So I'll pull back together again. And back on this pivot. Should work. There we go. This second lever goes on here. There's no relevant movement between the two, but I'll put a little bit on the pivot there. All right. And the clip goes on, and that's the speed mechanism done. I've got way too much grease here. I'm going to wipe off the excess. Doesn't need to have that much. This lever thing here, that's where the idler wheel goes. This moves slightly to engage the idler wheel on the side of the um, latter. I'll, I've cleaned it. I'll just put a drop of oil on that. I don't have to go mad with that. The only two remaining ones is this one here and this one here. This is for the uh, record start and stop lever. Um, I just need a bit of, bit of um, new grease in there, clean the old stuff out. I'll just clean this and I should be able to get under there. I don't really want to pull it apart. Oh, yeah, okay. I decided to pull it apart. So, once again, a bit of grease on there and a bit where it's going to rotate and a little bit on that where it pinches on the. This um, operates the, uh, the idler wheel. So, that was on there, I think. No idea where it went down here. A little bit where the circlip's going to rotate, or it's going to rotate on the circlip. Here's the other part of that mechanism. This needs to be fairly um, free because the, you know, it's got to be sprung off and whatever at the end of the record. So once again, a bit of grease on there. Get some under where it's going to rotate. And we need a bit on here. There it is. Get the excess off. <laughs> That's so much freer. Amazing. Yeah, good. This is the tone arm mechanism. There's a pivot there, which I've already cleaned. I'll just put a drop of oil on that. This is the record sizing pull. Uh, put a bit on that as well. And they all go in there. That's the uh, all part of the same mechanism there. There's another part of it underneath here. I don't want to pull all this apart to try and get some grease in there. It's very free. There's another bit of it there. It's just rubbing on the deck. I'll just put a bit of grease there for no real reason. All right, time to put that sequencing plate on. I'll put this lever on. This is the one that comes off the uh, little pawl on the cam. That tells it when it's at the end of the record. I have the plate here. This is the follower that goes in the cam for sequencing the tone arm. I freed that up and oiled it. Now this pivots around this little guy here. There's another little lever that's got to go. Oh, put a lot on there. Goes in here. Goes around this little pin here. So that fits on there like that. All right, so that'll just sit there for a minute. This little pin lifts the tone arm, and I've just realised I need to put that on first. So I'll get that off again. Drop that in there. And need to wobble it. There it goes. And then I'll put that on. Right. Now that little pin runs along here. So put a little bit of grease there. Simply a matter of putting this plate. I'll put the cam follower in that slot there. You need to hold down the pin here. And this will somehow go over there like that. This lever here, you just manoeuvre it around it pops out of there. And this should sit down and we're done. This one's just a matter of holding the um, little lever up. There it is. And putting the circlip back on. Beautiful. Now this is supposed to have some graphite grease on it, so I'll put a bit of graphite there. I've got a bit excited there. It doesn't need that much on it. I think the last piece of the puzzle is this here. Whoa, that's so much. I don't need anywhere near that much. Get that off there. And this fits there, that's right. So a bit of grease around there. And I'll put some underneath here because it runs on that. And all that holds this on is the spring. 
goes down there and then yep bend it in there that's it i've also put a bit of grease on this trip lever here i forgot to do that this is all done now i can turn it over there's still the uh, stack holder for the records that's got to go in i'll leave that till a bit later this is the top of the player i've got an o-ring here it's very thin and it's a little bit small but that's okay better than being a bit big i suppose so that just slides down there then a thrust washer goes on here's the bearing for the turntable and this needs to be packed with grease so just plunge it in there so that's got a nice reservoir of oil to call on there here's the other thrust washer once again a little bit of grease on there put him face down now here's the cam or the arm control cam whatever you want to call it garage just call it a cam bit of grease in there uh, this trip pull i'll put a tiniest drop of oil in this little bearing there and that's all that needs to be absolutely loose all right i'll put a drop of oil on the shaft here that'll do it and some in this cam follower a little bit of oil in there and this goes on here and you gotta line that cam up but it's only a matter of twisting it around there it is until it locks in and then refit the circlip that's it done you have to put these thrust washers on before you put this cam on you can't get them past next thing to do is put the motor in here's the motor and i was going to pull it apart just clean up the bearing surface here on the shaft just make sure there was no burnt oil on it but this is still spinning okay and the pads inside are still moist so all i'm going to do is replenish the uh, oil in those little felt pads and that'll keep going for another 50 years there's a little pad in there a little white thing i will top that up with as much oil as that'll take so i'll just keep adding it till it starts running out and there's another pad there do the same with that Uh, it's not taking any more oil on it's starting to run out so i'll let it soak for a while and then i'll go in and just make sure i get all the uh, excess oil out and i'll put it back on the turntable and i might add if you wanted to take these off and clean it up you can just undo the screws pull this off you might want to mark it make sure it goes back the same way uh, but they generally line up you don't have any issues with the motor polling or anything i've got the motor underneath i'll just put the clips on the mo the uh, rubber mounts here are no good they have turned particularly that one there has turned into <laughs> like a soft putty uh, these ones have just shrunk back a bit but that one you can almost mold so i've ordered some new ones when they come in i'll retrofit them i want to clean this spindle off I've had no greasy fingers on it i've got some ipa on a tissue here and it's not india pale ale that's isopropyl alcohol it should clean off any grease that's on there and i've got the wheel here i'll also do the outside of that I'm not going to use any rubber renew or anything on it. This is really good condition. So I'll see how it goes first. Um, it was able to turn the turntable with that pin seized up. So I think it'll be okay. Bit of oil on there, touch of oil on here. And put a little clip on. There's a couple of items to lubricate. I'll just put a tiny bit of grease there where that rubs on the top there. Drop of oil on this pivot. I was ready to put the platter on. I will put a tiny drop of oil along the shaft there, let it fall down. Then the platter. And I'll just stop it at that top bearing there and put a little bit of oil there. So the bearing's in two parts. There's a top bearing and a lower bearing. All right, now I've got to put this clip on and make sure that clips in there i've skipped ahead a little bit i've put the oh, back shell on i guess you call it mounted the cartridge soldered the wires on and yes they are soldered on there's no provision to clip them on as you normally would i resprayed this silver bit here this is metal it was corroded so i sanded it all back got the corrosion out painted with some silver paint i also painted this arm here uh, that was all rusty and paint was missing 
that's the silver bit that had red something on it. I used a bit of fine steel wool and that took that off. That's just plastic that bit with the silver behind it to, to make it look like that. So that looks good. The whole thing looks pretty good. Now I've got my high fidelity signal tracer here. I'll turn that on. I've, I've connected that to the signal wires from the cartridge. I've got it on 45. I'll go to manual first just to make sure that the motor works at least. A lot of buzzing there. I'll try and lower it. Oop, no sound. Oh, there's a little bit there. Uh, so here's the here's the wires. That's ground. That's okay. Oh, there it is. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, the one's ready. Yeah, nothing there. So only one side of the cartridge is working. I'll put it back here, the one that wasn't working. I should be able to put my feet. That's crackling. Mm. That's crackling when I move that, and I can see wires in there. Well, I can see wires, I can see joints in there. Hey, look, it's got a little solder joint there. Now that did have a bit of black tape that looked like it came from the... Well, shush. That looked like it came from the factory. I'll turn that off. Um, there's only three wires. They're missing, missing the blue one. There's a blue wire. Look. Oh, there's all sorts of wires there's in there. There's a green one, and that's got another join there. I'll have to pull the wire out and see what's going on. I'm going to take the wires off here. It seems easier than undoing all that cartridge wiring again. Take the clamp off. Should be able to get that out of there. There it is. There's a bit of factory fitted tape. I'll put that off. And the wire comes through there. Um, not sure if this was a good idea or not. I'm getting these wires through here, but I'm starting to think I should have gone the other way. There. There's a blue wire on the bottom. It's not coming out of the tube, out of the toner. There's two little screws holding the cartridge on. If I take them out, I should be able to pull the wires through. I'll see if I can do this. I'm not sure that lump's going to go through. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. It broke. Take these two screws out. I probably should have done this in the first place, shouldn't I? There's the wire. Uh, that, that kind of meat. There's the green one. The red and white probably okay, but there's a bit missing out of the blue. So I don't know if it's got jammed or this, they can't do this at the factory. It'd be one piece of wire. So at some point, someone's tried to repair that. So the next thing is to replace it. I think I don't really want to join it again. Where do you find wire that thick and multi-strand. It's very, very thin. I had a look at all the supplier manuals that I have and I can't find wire that's anywhere near that thin. Uh, I can get twice that thick, <laughs> or twice as thick, but not that thin. Anyway, so what I thought I'd do is I'll have to repair this and I'll make sure the repair ends up inside the, um, you know, the tube here. So it means cutting even more wire off, which is not what I really wanted to do, but anyway, that'll be okay. So what I'll do is cut the wires at different lengths, solder them together, then I'll put a bit of heat shrink over the whole lot so it doesn't short to the, uh, the tube here, and it might short to each other because they're in different positions along the line. I cut the wires to length and I was going to do some fancy joining here. I ended up just twisting them together. It seems like the best way of doing it. I'll do this one. The blue tape on the alligator clips is just to stop it chomping through the thin wire. Number three, and there's number four. Okay, there's the four wires, and there's one there, one there, one there, one there. They're not touching each other. I have a bit of um, a heat shrink here, so I'll push that up. I think it'll go over these. Anyway. So if I can get that in there. 
All right, if I shrink that on, I think we're still within the tube. I hope. Oh, yeah. So I'll shrink that on. I'll feed it through the tube. We'll see how it goes. All right, I've got the wire going through all right. That goes in there. And that's not showing there. So good. Okay. I'll put the screws back in and remount it. We'll see how it goes on the bottom. I think it might be a bit short. I've loosely attached this solder tab and I think I'll make it. Uh, I may have problems getting the clamp on it. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. So I'll just put some solder on these. That's the two grounds. So I'll solder those in. This red one's supposed to go here. I'll put it on here. It's a little bit closer. I don't think it'll make any difference to its operation. Solder that little red guy on there. Solder that one on there. And I should be able to turn this around here like that. And something like that. Now put another bit of heat shrink there. If I can get that to hold down, maybe put some hot glue on it or something, um, I think it will be right. There were some other holes there and I didn't give much thought, but there's no reason I can't move that along a little. Why can't I put it in that one? Okay. I'll put a bit of hot glue on here as well. All right, I'm all set up. Those wires worked out perfectly at the back there. They're nice and loose. There's plenty of room for them to move around. So that turned out OK. Got the generator on there. So if I go to auto, I think physically this will work. It's the sound that's going to be an issue. That's working. I'll just get that off before I get copyrighted. Uh, that's the other one. Yeah, so they're both working? Nice. Okay. I noticed then that arm didn't go all the way up. It seemed to sort of jump over there, so it's probably not the right height. I've removed power from the motor. Um, so I'll go to manual. Actually, I'll go to auto. Spin this. I'll need to get that out of the way. Get that up there. Spin that. Let's see how high it's going. Yeah, it's just jumping over, so not high enough. I'll put a 12 inch record there, we'll measure the height. Uh, that's supposed to be half an inch, that height there. And what have we got there? It's pretty right, isn't it? Almost a bit high. So there's half an inch. All right. Well, I won't touch it. That's the way it was. I'll measure the weight of the stylus. It seems a bit high. Yeah, seven. I think this stylus is rated from three to seven. So I'll try and get it closer, maybe to five or something. There's a little wheel at the back there that you adjust, and I really don't know which way to go. Oh, there it goes. So I'll measure that. That's going down. What are we at? 6. 0 0.35. 5.9. It's very coarse adjustment, or vernier adjustment, I guess. Uh, 5. I'll leave it at 5, see what happens. If it skips around, we'll have to put it back a bit. Alright, let's try our 33 then. Very nice. There's a bit of Dino. Sounds alright, even on the little tinny tracer there. Yeah, so that sounds pretty good. Alright, so let me move that to right at the end there. We'll see if that ejects, or not ejects, but end of record. There she goes. Little Paul kicks in. And there we go. I'm happy with that. I think everything's working okay. Uh, I'll get on to the radio. When the mounts for the motor come in, I'll put it all together and we'll see if it sounds all right through the big speakers. I'm ready to put this frame back on the radio. I've got to put the glass in first, so I'll just turn it over. And here's the glass, well, it's plastic, but see, it just sits in there, I think. Yeah. And 
it has or it had a sticky double sided tape double back tape so I've put some double back tape on there uh, that should fit in there I, I guess the frame of the radio holds it in the tapes just there to let you get it into the, the actual radio part so there it is I've got the radio here I'll get this on here I assume it just slots all the way on there like that there it is there's a screw that goes in here this is not riveting viewing so I'll just put one on and then do the rest off camera and there's a nut on there there's three of this type there's a couple of screws that go through the bulkhead or front fascia if you like of the radio this silver bit all right i'll come back when they're all finished it's time to put the knobs on i've glued the new silver centers on there so they look pretty good i'm happy with those now they should push on there it is yeah look good looks good very good here's another one to put on and some are very loose on the shaft that one's all right it's just a matter of opening this gap up a little but you've got to be careful you will break one half off if you're not too careful you go too far all right, I've got these two to do. I don't have the two felts they were missing, so I'm going to cut some new ones out, put the knobs on, and then we'll fit this back to the radio. I've mounted the radio back in the cabinet, and I've put some power on it. I've even connected an antenna on it. We'll see if it works. in five minutes. Thank you Liam, they're moving. So that's working all right. At the, it look like the jobs they currently do because it's pipelines. So what he's done here, he's back. He's been for that six, he's bowled a lot of water. Okay, I'll yeah, we'll put it on Graham. I've got a record ready to play. It's by Gene Sibelius and it's called Finlandia. It's a 10 inch one. I haven't tried a 10 inch so I thought I'd put that on. So uh, we're on Graham. It's See if it's going to work. It should work for a 10 inch, I guess. Now, of course, I can't play a lot of it, I don't think. Sounds good. It sounds very good. Okay. Now, copyright won't let me play that, but the record player is working really well. I had a couple of shots at it before, before I plugged it into here and just had the the player going and it loaded and unloaded perfectly so quite happy with that they're good units the garage I don't mind them I mean they're only domestic level but um, they're pretty good they're simple and they work pretty well there's just one small thing I need to do and then I'll hand this back to the owner the last thing I wanted to do was try and reproduce a little brush that was used to clean the stylus as the tone arm went over the top of it brushed over it as you can see in the little photo there so what I've done is got hold of a blush brush, which is used to apply blush, and it's very soft. And I've just cut a small amount off. I've made this little thing here, which will fit onto the turntable of the scutcheon. It has a little post there, and there's a whole little uh, match up with the post. And I'm going to stick that in there. Now I've made the hole in here way too big for the amount of brush that I need. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. I can always print a new one if I need to. And I think I'll just soak this in super glue and then I'll pot it with some uh, epoxy into the plastic. Got some super glue. I will try and soak this in the super glue. All right, I'll let that dry. The little brush with the super glue is dried overnight, so that's quite hard. 
Um, I've mixed up a bit of two-part epoxy, which I'll put in the hole there, and then I'll just put this on top of it. I printed a new one of these little stands. Uh, this one had a bigger hole, this is smaller. I also treated this in the acetone. So it's come out pretty good. It's nice and smooth. This one still has the printing marks on it. I'll see if I can drop some glue in here. Oh, that's not bad. I'll see how that goes. Probably doesn't need a lot because this will just about fill the hole up. I tested this a number of times to make sure it was going to fit and it went in all right. Now it's stuck. Anyway, I think that's got it. That will be enough glue to hold that. That'll take a few hours to dry off. I'll come back and we'll try and put it on the radiogram. I'll put the little brush on. So it just pushes on. Oh, look at it. It's quite a tight fit. There it is. I've trimmed those hairs off a bit to make them shorter. All right, let's give it a go. There it is. You can just hear a slight. Ah, ah. Yeah, I'll just turn that off. If you can see it there, the stylus selector tab is hitting it. So that's stopping it moving. I suspect the original head didn't have a selectable stylus on it. Uh, maybe I'll go and turn up an aluminium one and we'll try that out. This is a bit of 6mm aluminium will fit fine. I did try it. That should allow for the little turning over tab on the stylus. So I'm going to face it off. I'll drill a 3.5 mil hole all the way through. The 3.5 hole should fit on the little prong that's on the radio and I will might come back and make it a 4 mil hole uh, on the top just to fit the hair in. So let me just finish off this end. As I said I'm not going to waste too much time on this thing. I'll just put a centre in it. I've got a three and a half mil drill in there. I'll polish the outside, make it look nice and shiny. So I've got the cutter set up, I've got some lubricant on there. Cutting it off. Here's the new one. I've put some hair in the top there, the brush hair. So there it is. So I'll see if that clears it. So what do we got there? Ah, oh, look, there's probably a millimetre, maybe a bit more, one and a half. So that's enough. As long as it misses, that's all it needs. Just do another cycle. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, plenty of room there. So I'll just get that off. All right, I'll just um, retract it. I'll reset it and uh, that'll be it. So this turned out rather nice. I will take this out again and put some clear coat on it so that it keeps nice and shiny. And I think that's about it. I think I can hand this back to the owner. I did contact him. He was very excited to see it all working. I had a really good time doing this one. I had the transistor unit, which is unusual. I don't usually do transistors. Uh, the Garrard record player, I really enjoyed doing the Garrards. The Phillips, not so much. The Garrards, I quite like them. They're very, very good. I think my next project is going to be an STC radio chassis I have here. It looks like it went down with a Titanic, but it should look all right once I've finished it and hopefully be working again. I hope you enjoyed watching this HMV Gram being repaired, and I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure. Thank you. Yeah.